with the impending release of GTA 6 coming at some point within the next few years, in this video I'll be going through some major quality of life and gameplay changes that Rockstar needs to implement for their next instalment, and in particular the online component. So here are 9 quality of life changes Rockstar need to make for GTA 6. The first one is paint jobs. I never understood why we always had just a select list of hues to choose from rather than being able to just make our own in the Los Santos customs. You can create your own crew colour but the hassle involved is just unacceptable. All crew colours need to be changed on the Rockstar Social Club which means you have to go to their website, create a crew, change your crew colour, then quit the game and load back in before you could respray your vehicle. If that wasn't bad enough, the colours would come out around 30% brighter in game than it would look on their website, meaning many times going back and forth before you got the colour you wanted. But wait, it gets worse still. If you wanted darker colours, you would need to alter the background game files on the Social Club website. This meant going into the inspect element and changing the value in two locations and then adding a couple of letters after the code, then saving it. This is probably one of the biggest oversights in GTA due to the hassle you need to go through just to change the colour of your vehicle. What they need to do is have a colour palette where you can change your colour to your exact specifications and see it in real time, inside the customs workshop. If this change is not at the top of their list, everyone working on the game needs to be fired. Another change to do with colours is the rims. Just like the preset colours, you are limited to what colours you can have on your rims. If you wanted specific colours on the default rims that come with your vehicle, most of which cannot be equipped separately, you would need to access your iFruit app on your real life phone and do a glitch here which would change your default rims to the colour you chose. One of the problems with that is how the iFruit app has not worked for several years. Just like the vehicle colours, we need a colour palette where we simply choose our colour from inside the custom shop. There are currently only 41 colours to choose from. Another issue with the iFruit app is the number plates. Custom number plates can only be made and purchased using the iFruit app which doesn't actually work. As it stands, you need to go into your iFruit app, create your plate, pay the $100,000, then wait in-game before you can visit a customs to equip it. A total waste of time and not user-friendly at all. So this is another aspect of the game that needs to be totally controllable while in the customs. Sticking with cars, it would be great if they added a livery editor like they have in Gran Turismo. On Gran Turismo, you can upload your very own created decals for liveries or save some that others have made and then adapt them to your vehicle. I spent many, many hours creating my own liveries on GT Sport. Obviously, they will need to keep tabs on inappropriate liveries that could and would be made, but this is something they really should consider. Realistically, they are more likely to have a list of default sponsorship logos relevant to the parody world of GTA, like Sprunk or Atomic and have them available for us to place on the vehicle ourselves. This would bring a truly game-changing experience to GTA and in particular the car customization and meet communities. I recently spent just over half a day reorganizing my many many garages so they all fit in with a certain theme, like having all of my Pegasi vehicles in one garage. I'm hoping they bring in a better way to reorganise our garages rather than have to drive every single vehicle around from one garage to another. Having something like a separate menu for the cars in our garages that we can switch around will be so much more efficient and save us car collectors hours upon hours of our time, which would be better spent actually enjoying the game. Every time a new set of cars comes out, the garages need to be rearranged again in order to continue with these themes. This will also save a lot of time fumbling around on a garage menu when calling our mechanic as it's easier to remember which cars are stored in which garages. Curb boosting is when you hit a curb or a bump in a vehicle which then compresses the suspension and boosts the revs. This then gives a significant speed boost to that vehicle. This is the complete opposite of reality where hitting bumps would slow the car down significantly. You see it a lot in F1, where drivers would find the smoothest part of the track in order to keep their speed up. Curb boosting needs to be eradicated from the game, 
meaning racing would rely more on skill and the racing line rather than how many times you can swerve all over the kerbs. This would also mean cleaner racing, but this is GTA after all. Pretty one nail your fucking low rank trick. Imagine being in level fucking whatever he is, two. Be a dickhead. Having the custom loadout option is great and all, but these loadouts do not currently carry over to certain heists, meaning flicking through many, many weapons before you get to the one you really want. In the next GTA, they should add a custom loadout for the heists, as well as giving us the option to sell weapons we don't want, or to just get rid of them completely. Flicking through the weapons during an intense heist is very frustrating when it's full of weapons you never use. With more updates and DLCs comes more phone contacts. I currently have 34 contacts in my phone and I only ever use about 5. Having a top 5 that we can have for speed dialing would be so much more effective and will save us flicking back and forth throughout the entire contact list. This should be a very easy feature to add in. Morris Mutual Insurance, how can we help you? I think we can do that. I've been banging on about how slow it is on console to switch the first person for some time. Currently, it takes up to three button presses before you can get into first person. This is okay when you're just standing around as it's quite fast, but most of the time you'll miss it and have to go through all the motions again. This becomes particularly slower when you're running and in a gunfight due to how clunky the controls are. If they could add a way to switch the first person in just one click, that would be great. So those are my 9 picks for changes that Rockstar need to make for GTA 6. If you have any more suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. Especially as I don't have any annoying adverts about VPNs in any of my videos. I will now leave you with some bonus footage of liveries I'd previously made on Gran Turismo. I'm Beatsdown and I'll see you in the next one.